Welcome to the Voided Tech Channel's 77th edition and second year of the Space and Tech Rewind. We are reviewing the milestones that occurred on each day in the week of November 29th through December 5th in space exploration, science, and technology. November 29th, 1961. The Mercury MA-5 spacecraft was launched on an Atlas D rocket from the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station's Launch Complex 14 on this date. It was the second and final orbital qualification of the spacecraft prior to manned flight. The capsule was occupied by Enos, a 38-pound chimpanzee. During the flight, the chimpanzee performed psychomotor duties and upon recovery was found to be in excellent physical condition. Scheduled for three orbits, the spacecraft was returned to Earth after only two due to the failure of a roll reaction jet and to the overheating of an inverter in the electrical system. Both of these difficulties could have been corrected had an astronaut been on board. The spacecraft was recovered 255 miles southeast of Bermuda by the destroyer USS Stormies. NASA proclaimed the mission a success and certified the Mercury spacecraft for orbital human flight. John Glenn became the first American to orbit the Earth in the Mercury capsule Friendship 7 on February 2nd of 1962. November 30th, 1875, a U.S. patent was issued for a biscuit cutter to black American inventor Alexander Ashbourne on this date. The device consisted of a number of metal cutters which could have various plain or fancy shapes mounted on a hinged plate attached to a molding board on which dough for cakes or biscuits could be rolled out. The plate was then closed over the dough, allowing the cutters to cut through the dough, forming many shapes simultaneously. When the hinged plate was lifted, to simplify removal of the cut shapes, each cutter contained a spring-loaded plate of a similar shape to eject the cut dough. A provision was made to store the rolling pin in a concave crossbar along the back of the hinges. Ashbourne, who was born in slavery in 1820 and emancipated in the 1840s, received four patents in his lifetime. Perhaps his best known invention, still in use in 2021 for hair products, foods, and scented products, is the process for refining coconut oil. His process included filtration, bleaching, high temperature heating, and finally, hydrogenation to ensure that no unsaturated fatty acids were left in the oil. Ashbourne began working on this process in the same year of his biscuit cutter patent and received a patent for the coconut oil processing on July 27, 1880. Ashbourne died in 1915 in Oakland, California. He was 95. December 1st, 2020, the equipment platform suspended over the radio telescope dish of the Arecibo Observatory, Puerto Rico, collapsed on this date. One of its main suspension cables had snapped early in the previous August, leaving it in a dangerous, unstable condition. The decision to shut down the instrument was made by its owner, the U.S. National Science Foundation. Before demolition could commence, another cable snapped. The 900-ton platform smashed into the 1,000 feet wide dish 500 feet below, thus ended a nearly 60-year era of world-class research, which included the detection of the first binary pulsar in 1974. The Arecibo Observatory also has other facilities beyond the destroyed main telescope, including a 39-foot radio telescope intended for very long baseline interferometry and a LIDAR facility. A consortium led by the University of Central Florida has continued research in these facilities since the main telescope's collapse. The Puerto Rican government and the U.S. National Science Foundation have explored their available options in rebuilding the main telescope, but no plans have been put into place as of the date of this video. Want to know how to navigate our channel content? We refer to tech documentary segments as episodes. Coverage of current events in space exploration, science, and technology are labeled as shorts. Space and tech history are documented in an anthology called Milestones. Gameplay recordings can be discovered on the Belated Tech Gaming channel in videos called Walkthroughs and Side Missions. 
Reviews of tools and equipment hail from the Tool Crib. And reviews of small electronics and appliances arrive by way of the Radio Shed. Looking for a specific video on our channel that we may have mentioned in one of our other videos? Links to those episodes can be found in the description section below. Also, we have begun labeling our video titles with numbers, such as M105 for Milestones 105 or S49 for Short 49, so viewers can perform a title search. Finally, you can peruse our entire 300 plus video library by looking at our playlists, which conveniently sort videos by subject. December 2nd, 1877, Frenchman Louis Paul Kelleté became the first to liquefy oxygen on this date. Shortly after, he was also the first to liquefy hydrogen, nitrogen dioxide, carbon monoxide, and acetylene. Kelleté realized that the failure of others to liquefy the permanent gases, even under enormous pressures, was explained by Thomas Andrews' concept of critical temperature. He succeeded in producing liquid oxygen by allowing the cold, compressed gas to rapidly expand, depending on the effect discovered by James Joule and William Thompson that cooled the gas to below its critical temperature. Among his other achievements, Calité conducted an investigation of air resistance on falling bodies, made a study of liquid oxygen breathing apparatus for high altitude ascents, and developed numerous devices, including automatic cameras and altimeter, and air sample collectors for the sounding balloon studies of the upper atmosphere. He also eventually liquefied nitrogen and air. Calité died in 1913. He was 80. December 3rd, 1984. Shortly after midnight on this date, the inhabitants of the city of Bhopal, India, became victims of the world's worst industrial disaster. Over 40 tons of highly poisonous methyl isocyanate gas leaked out of the Union Carbide Pesticide Factory. Poisonous gases enveloped an area of 40 square kilometers, killing thousands of people in its immediate wake. Over half a million suffered from acute breathlessness, pain in the eyes, and vomiting, as they ran in panic to get away from the poison clouds that hung close to the ground for more than four hours. In 1989, after years of litigation, Union Carbide agreed to pay the Indian government $470 million in damages. In return, the government agreed to drop criminal charges against the company. The incident was a permanent stain on the venerable Union Carbide, which had been founded in Texas in 1917. The company struggled to pay off debts after the disaster and was the target of a number of takeover attempts. UCC finally succumbed in 1999, accepting a bid from Dow Chemical. Dow then merged with DuPont briefly for four years and was spun off as an independent company again, this time headquartered in Michigan. In 1984, UCC CEO Warren Anderson flew from the U.S. to India to face manslaughter charges but was eventually released on the lack of evidence. Local operators of the plant were eventually convicted and served jail time with regard to the incident. Anderson died in Vero Beach, Florida in 2014. He was 93. Have you agreed with our choices or do you think there are other events in space and tech history that are better? Go ahead and share with us by dropping a comment below. If you have suggestions for a space and tech milestone, let us know. We'll credit events we pick for future videos to those viewers that post them. We hope you have been enjoying our content. Have we earned your subscription to our channel? If yes, and you have not taken the opportunity to subscribe, please take a moment to do so now and click the bell notification icon so you don't miss upcoming videos. We want to continue delivering great content to you. You can always unsubscribe and subscribing is free. December 4, 1998, the Space Shuttle Endeavour and a crew of six blasted off from the Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex 39A on its date on the first mission to begin assembling the International Space Station. The Endeavour was carrying the Unity module, which was to be mated to the Russian Zarya module, the two of which would become the core of the ISS. 
Other payloads on the STS-88 mission included the IMAX cargo bay camera, the Argentine Scientific Application Satellite S, and the Mighty That-1 hitchhiker payload. Russian cosmonaut Sergei Kirkolev was part of the STS-88 crew, and it was he and Shuttle Commander and astronaut Robert Cabana that opened the hatch between the Zera and Unity modules and brought the station into service. The hatches to Zera and Unity were closed before Endeavour undocked from the new station, leaving the new complex to orbit the Earth unpiloted. December 5, 1965. The first PhD dissertation in computer science was presented to its recipient, Richard L. Wechselblatt, on this date. Many PhD candidates had performed computer-related work, but Wechselblatt's diploma, presented by the University of Pennsylvania, the home of ENIAC, was the first one to carry the designation computer science. Paul Wechselblatt is perhaps best known for the code he wrote for the interface message processor packet switching node used by ARPANET. ARPANET eventually evolved into what is today called the Internet. Wechselblatt eventually left the computer field to become an artisan woodcraftsman and has since fully retired. He lives with his wife in Coatesville, Pennsylvania. At the time of this video, he was 83. On November 8, 2021, satellite company Viasat announced that it had agreed to buy legacy communications company Inmarsat for $7.3 billion. The deal consists of $850 million in cash, $3.1 billion in Viasat shares, and the assumption of $3.4 billion of debt. The acquisition comes at a time when SpaceX is preparing to launch Viasat's first satellite to geostationary orbit using a Falcon Heavy rocket in early 2022. That satellite is to cover the Americas with high-speed broadband, albeit with longer latency than the low Earth orbit Starlink. This launch is to be followed by another in the latter half of 2022 targeting Europe, and then a third for Asia in 2023. During the previous May, Viasat filed suit in the DC Circuit Court to halt SpaceX's ongoing launches of low Earth orbit satellites that power Starlink. Viasat alleged that the Federal Communication Commission's decision did not comply with the National Environmental Policy Act and said that SpaceX launches should be halted due to environmental harms when satellites are taken out of orbit, light pollution that alters the night sky, and orbital debris. The FCC rejected these claims, and on July 20, 2021, the DC Circuit Court ruled that SpaceX can keep launching broadband satellites. Former NASA Administrator Jim Bridenstine had joined Viasat's boards of directors in April of 2021. Viasat Executive Chairman Mark Denkberg commented on the appointment by saying, quote, Because of the pivotal role he's played in expanding the U.S. manned space program, Jim is also an ardent proponent of preserving safe access to space via proactive measures to protect the space environment and contain orbital debris. Bridenstine had worked closely with SpaceX to bring its commercial crew program to a successful first manned launch in May of 2020, so it was interesting that the former Oklahoma congressman cast dispersions on low Earth orbit mega constellations like that of Starlink. Viasat's business model is predicated on micro constellations posted in geostationary orbit, well out of the way of most near term space activity. We hope you enjoyed the 77th episode of Blade of Tech Space and Tech Rewind. If so, click that like button. Don't forget to subscribe or just stay in touch by following us on our microblogging accounts, which are listed below, as well as in the community feed for this channel. We announce all new videos on those outlets. Stay connected by occasionally checking our Instagram feed and Minds page, where we post content from our upcoming episodes and from episodes past that you may have missed, and where we cover current news and events related to channel content. Thanks for watching.